Gospel is written in the 14th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 22nd verse. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Thanks be unto thee, O Lord, for this thy holy gospel. Let us proclaim our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, made of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God. Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came out of the heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified for us and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and died. Sit on the right hand of God, and he shall come again in glory to judge the 
two elderly sisters whose house had recently been flooded. Elsie holds a painting tightly to her chest. Thank God, Father's painting is safe. She beams. Edie stands sullenly in the corner, wiping tears from her eyes. But all the family photos have gone, for good. Both sisters face the same situation. But one sees hope, and the other despair. It's the, is this glass half empty or half full scenario. Scholars are simply divided about Peter walking on the water. Is this event recorded to show how not to be a disciple? Was Peter foolish to try to copy Christ? And did he get his just deserts by sinking? Or is it recorded to point to Peter's example of faith, being prepared to step out of the boat and follow in Christ's footsteps and succeeding, even if only for a short time? Peter's life seems to have been full of peaks and troughs. He was the only disciple to realise that Jesus was the Son of God, which led Christ to call him the rock upon which he would build his church. But immediately afterwards, Peter rebukes Jesus for saying he will suffer and die. And Jesus then likens him to Satan. We often forget that Peter is the only disciple, brave enough to follow Jesus after his arrest. But we remember how he goes on to deny Jesus three times. According to tradition, this traitor Peter follows him through to death. It is said that Peter tried to flee persecution in Rome, but outside the city had a vision of Christ which encouraged him to turn back and face execution. So how does today's Gospel view Peter's decision to follow Jesus onto the water. At the start of our reading, Jesus insists that the disciples leave him alone, or as we would say today, give him a bit of space to pray. And so the disciples start to row across the lake without him. So in obedience to Jesus, they launch their boat but then find themselves caught right in the middle of a storm, all alone, with their master nowhere to be seen. We don't know for how long the disciples battled before Jesus approached them on the water. From outside the situation, we can appreciate the profound statement Jesus made about himself by walking on the water. He broke all scientific rules and proved he was the Lord even over creation. This theology seems to have been lost on the disciples, though. They were overwhelmed by fear. They didn't seem to recall how Jesus had calmed a storm once before in their midst. They didn't seem to have learnt anything from Christ's miraculous feeding of the 5,000, which had occurred only the previous afternoon. In fact, they didn't even recognise Christ as he approached them, fearing it was a ghost. Raw panic seems to have pushed out any thought of Jesus from their minds. Peter was, as usual, the first to respond when Jesus spoke to him. Matthew's Gospel seems particularly interested in Peter. It's the only one to tell us about him walking on the water. And many think Matthew wanted to teach us about discipleship through him. Imagine having the courage even to consider following Jesus onto the stormy water. And Jesus seems to encourage Peter's boldness by answering his request to call him over. And whilst Peter kept his eyes firmly fixed upon Jesus, he was all right. Jesus' power seems to have flown in flowed into him, and he too actually walked upon the water for a while. 
But when he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the waves surging around him, his faith dried up and he began to sink. Even then, Jesus' rebuke is not, well, what did you expect if you tried to imitate me? But why did you hesitate? Or as another version puts it, why did you doubt? So was Peter a failure? Sure, he did eventually sink, but he also became the only man ever to succeed in copying Christ's walk on water. That experience must have stayed with him for the rest of his life, encouraging him that the power of Jesus was available to strengthen him amidst all the persecutions he was to face. The Gospels are so refreshingly honest about the failings of the disciples, and we can take heart from that. If we try to do anything for God, we will face difficulties just as the disciples faced the storm when obeying Jesus. And we will get things wrong. But Jesus is standing by, ready to help us when we start to sing. And despite our inevitable failures, we learn and achieve much more through trying to follow him than we do by staying put in our own comfort zone. So like the prophet Elijah up a mountain, listening out for your voice, help us to listen out for what you want to say to us. Like the disciples tossed about in a boat on the lake, help us to trust that you are with us in all things. Like Peter wanting to prove our commitment to you, help us as we try to be faithful to you. For we will not always get it right, but you love us for trying. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God.